Let's-go meeting postponed due to Occupy protests. Heavy traffic as primary schools resume classes in protest-affected districts. And three scientists win the Nobel Physics Prize for creating blue LEDs. Good evening. The Legislative Council's weekly meeting was supposed to resume tomorrow after the summer break, but LegCo President Sung Yak Singh has now postponed it until Wednesday next week. Sung cited security concerns as the reason for rearranging the schedule. Meanwhile, the Executive Council meeting this morning was also relocated to Government House. Owen Fung reports. 41 pro-establishment lawmakers and government officials requested the LegCo president to postpone the general council meeting. They do not feel it is suitable to resume the meeting tomorrow with road access to the LegCo building being blocked and protesters still gathering around the area. Tang said he made the decision based on safety considerations. Our worry is if the council debates such a controversial issue as the Occupy campaign and the way the police have been uh, dealing with it, uh, the debate inevitably will be very emotional. Scenes we have seen in the last week, I think, very uh, uh, clearly show that sometimes uh, the, the situation can get out of hand without uh, the intention of anybody. Tang further explained that access to the LegCo building through certain entrances is currently at the discretion of protesters and that a safe passageway cannot be guaranteed for the legislators and officials. But pan-democratic lawmakers said that a pro-establishment camp had deferred the council meeting for reasons other than safety and security concerns. They fear public opinion. They do not have the courage and audacity to stand up and defend what the SAR government has done and what the police did to the very peaceful demonstrators outside. In addition to the issue of postponing the weekly council meeting, pan-democratic lawmakers are also at odds with the pro-establishment camp over the use of legislators' office facilities by Occupy protesters. The LegCo president, however, said he does not think there is any problem with lawmakers bringing guests into the complex to engage in LegCo-related activities. The Executive Council, meanwhile, also made alternative arrangements for its weekly meeting. Instead of being held at the Chief Executive's office, the event was relocated to Government House this morning. No petition area was set up outside the venue of the meeting and members of the media were not allowed into the compound. Owen Fung, TVB News. The Education Bureau has announced classes for kindergarten students in Wan Chai Central and Western will remain suspended tomorrow. This has primary schools in the three districts resume classes today. School children and parents told us it had taken them longer than usual to get to school. Stephanie Choi reports. Kindergarten classes in the Wan Chai Central and Western districts will remain suspended tomorrow. Uh, because kindergarten kids are younger, if uh, they have uh, to engage in longer traveling time because of serious traffic congestion, uh, we need to give them special consideration. Kindergartens and uh, child care centers have to remain open uh, so as to uh, take care of the needs of parents where necessary. The classes resumed today for this group of primary school students and it took them more than half an hour longer than usual to get to school. This parent told us that although he left home an hour earlier than he normally would, he just managed to get his daughter to school on time because of heavy traffic on the road. This boy said he is concerned about the workload accumulated from the class suspension. But a father said there shouldn't be a problem since his child is only in primary school. 
School authorities may shorten holidays to make time for supplementary classes. The teachers has already discussed about uh, the coming assessments and also the, the teaching curriculum, how, how to arrange it. With the end of the class suspension, the taxi driver told us that he's been seeing more school buses on the road. It took me half an hour to get from the Western Harbour crossing to the IFC, he added. Traffic along Gloucester Road and Lungwa Road has been more saturated than the past few days. In Kowloon, the junction of Nathan Road and Argyle Street in Mong Kok remains closed to traffic. And traffic was unusually busy during the morning rush hour along the main roads in the Yao Ma Te, Tim Sha Choi and Mong Kok areas. A group of central and western district councillors appealed to demonstrators to stop their occupation protests so that people's lives can return to normal. Stephanie Choi, TVB News. Few protesters remain in some areas such as Causeway Bay and outside the chief executive's office. Yet barricades they've set up are still blocking roads and paths, including vehicle access to government offices. Authorities again urge protesters to remove the road obstructions, but stop short of saying if or when action will be taken to clear the roads. Right now, we are trying every means to ensure that the impact of the Occupy Central uh, event would be minimized for Hong Kong. And as you know, and we all know, there are well, different groups of protesters and different areas. And actually, the number fluctuates a lot. And the actual well, conflict on site also varies at different moments. So it would be hard for us to foresee uh, which roads could be cleared and also the overall plan uh, to clear exactly which road. It was generally calm at the various occupation sites earlier today, but in Mong Kok, an atmosphere of unease remains. Our Liz Yoon brings us this live update from the scene. Liz. Hi, Sonia. I'm at a junction between Argyle Street and Nathan Road. Both the number of onlookers and protesters grew as people finished work and school. And some anti-occupiers hung up banners which say no more tolerance and anti-occupation. They demanded the occupiers to retreat from the area immediately. And sources say that some anti-occupiers might remove barricades on Argyle Street at 8 p.m. tonight. And the police said Mong Kok has become a high-risk area. Despite the rumor, supporters of the movement said they're not worried about their own safety, as they believe that police officers are here to protect them. But some university and secondary students are worried that violent conflicts might break out later in the evening, and they plan not to stay long. That's all from me for now. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Liz, for that. Over in Mong Kok, occupiers continue to block streets along Nathan Road. Some protesters have been calling on people to take the opportunity to explore side streets and support small vendors. But as Liz Yoon reports, a lot of businesses are still crying foul. Some in the civil disobedience campaign see the city as dominated by big businesses. Among the many posters put up in Mong Kok calling for genuine democracy, there are some like this one that says unite the community, support small businesses. I bought some things from like the water, water bottles or uh, some fruits or sandwiches from local shops. We advertise that uh, we should buy things from the local shops to minimize our uh, protest effects on them. Supporting small businesses is good for our, uh, the health of our, the economic environment. It's want to make the change, not just the politics, uh, also the economics. This drive to support individual businesses has been applauded by some, such as this mainland tourist who said he will buy drinks from the small vendors to support them. Still, many shops are suffering. This waitress from a nearby restaurant says sales have dropped by half since Argyle Street was blocked. She pointed out that protesters are provided food and drinks and there's no need for them to spend money here. The owner of this newspaper stall said there are more people out in Mong Kok at night due to the movement, which has brought up sales by around 20%. But it still does not make up for losses during the day, with sales dropping up to 30%. Industry representatives from the retail, catering and transportation sectors spoke out today about the impact on their livelihoods. Many reported heavy losses. Occupy Central is actually influencing the, all, all the industry, all the economy in Hong Kong, no matter is it small industries or is it big corporations. It, it's not just influencing 
the domestic economy, but actually because Hong Kong is an international city, a lot of foreign company, foreign investors are looking at us in a very big question mark right now. Chung said the industries understand it's unrealistic to ask the protesters to end their movement, so they are simply asking those in Mong Kok and Causeway Bay to move to Admiralty and target the government instead of the people. Liz Yun, TVB News. A pair of Japanese scientists and a scientist from the United States have won the 2014 Nobel Prize for Physics for creating blue light-emitting diodes, or LEDs. Isamu Akasaki and Hiroshi Amano of Japan and American Suji Nakamura triggered a transformation in lighting technology when they produced blue light-emitting diodes, or LEDs, from semiconductors in the 1990s. Scientists had struggled with the problem for decades. The Nobel Committee says blue LEDs can be combined with green and red LEDs to create energy-efficient white light, replacing traditional incandescent bulbs and fluorescent lamps. Blue LEDs have spurred the development of smartphones and computer and television screens. Nakamura calls the award an amazing and unbelievable feeling. And still ahead in our newscast. A Spanish nurse becomes the first person to contract Ebola outside West Africa. A new attraction at a Paris landmark. And Michael Phelps suspended for six months by USA Swimming. I've always told him to watch what he ate. I know. I tried to get him to work out more as well. He was so depressed. He had a hard time staying positive. Well, it doesn't matter now. Starting Monday, Pearl's Wellbeing Series at 9:30 p.m. 每粒纽崔莱多宝营养片都系一个品质承诺。透过指纹图谱技术锁定营养精华，呢个就系营养丰富嘅纽崔莱多宝营养片。喂，阿仔啊，我肚好痛啊，仲鼻塞添啊！你等等下，喂，光，老婆，喉咙好痛啊，仲灼伤骨头啊！我发烧啊，你摸下我头几轻，老婆，我吸死佢！幸福为你行多步，特强幸福伤风咳素，十二大伤风感冒同咳症状，一次过 KO。幸福为你行多步。The time now is 7.43. The time check was brought to you by Seiko. Welcome back. A nurse from Spain has become the first person to contract Ebola outside of West Africa. She helped treat two Spanish missionaries who died after being flown back from Africa to Madrid with the deadly virus. Because the nurse was on vacation when she fell sick, hunting down all those she came in contact with will prove a nightmare. Spain's health minister broke the news about the first known transmission of Ebola outside West Africa. The infected nurse was part of a team that treated two Spanish priests who both died of the virus after being flown back to Madrid from Liberia. The nurse was on vacation when she fell sick, so tracking down all those she had contact with will be next to impossible. Still, Spanish health authorities immediately isolated the nurse and enacted measures to protect the rest of the Spanish population. Trying to ensure Ebola is never spread in the United States, President Barack Obama said his administration is working on ways to screen all airline passengers entering the U.S. Uh, Ebola is a very serious disease, uh, and uh, the ability of people who are infected to carry that across borders is something uh, that we have to take extremely seriously. And so it is very important for us to.